Hi everyone, I'm David from the Sado Project, and this is a video about how it's openness, not decentralization that matters in blockchain. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, but you've seen Inception, you'll know where we got our name. Uh, the reason we picked Sado is that while many characters in the film fall into the world of the dream and forget truths they once knew, Sado's the character who remembers. And we think this is a really powerful analogy for blockchain because in the 13 years since Bitcoin's inception, we've had a lot of people forget truths about blockchain that used to be self-evident. And the most important of these is, what did Satoshi really invent? Now, these days, if you ask most computer scientists, especially in proof-of-stake circles, what they will tell you is that uh, Bitcoin was special because it was a consensus protocol that allowed distributed systems to keep in sync. And this is important because it lets us have decentralization. Uh, on crypto Twitter, you will off also hear a lot of people tell you that Satoshi's solution is important because it was the first solution to the Byzantine general's problem. Now, uh, as I think everyone here knows, that's not true. Uh, Leslie Lamport solved that problem in 1982. So we've known how to build decentralized consensus mechanisms since the early 1980s. What was actually special about Satoshi's contribution is that his solution was open. His was the first solution that didn't require a closed set of participants. And this was a huge deal because it eliminated the need for a mechanism or a trusted third party to decide who gets to choose. The second most important thing is that Satoshi's solution was self-sufficient. He moved money into the system and he used that money to create an incentive structure that not only deterred attackers, but incentivized honest nodes to take part and pay them to run the network so that if one person left, another person would fire up a machine and join. So we have these two properties, openness and self-sufficiency, and that is what actually matters. And if you have any doubts about this, or if anyone tells you it's, no, it's decentralization, I want you to try this thought experiment. Imagine a decentralized system that doesn't have these properties because you're not gonna want it. If a network is open but it can't pay for itself, it's gonna end up being run by Amazon or Google. And if it can pay for itself but it's not open, well, congratulations, you've invented the banking system. And this brings us to the big economic challenge with blockchain, because openness is not free. We need to have people pay for these open data flows that supports it and allows free competition in the network. And in the original design, volunteers took care of this work. But as these networks scale, the responsibility for doing that needs to shift to for-profit firms in the private sector. And as it turns out, economics has a ton to say about the massive problems that computer scientists are running into doing this. Uh, if you've heard of the free rider problem, the tragedy of the commons, the prisoner's dilemma, uh, you've heard of some of the research that came out of something called public choice economics in the 1960s. And what public choice economists like Manker Olson recognized is that open systems that provide non-excludable benefits not only allow people to focus on activities that make them money, but it prevents you from using coercion to force them to do things that have a more general benefit but are less individually profitable. And the result of this is equilibrium market failures that are like the free rider problem. And this is what's happening with the peer-to-peer -peer network right now in every scalable blockchain. Miners and stakers do not want to run the network. They are letting their responsibility for that be handled by other people. Uh, this is basically, this is the Ethereum network where everybody is free riding on Infura. Now, if you talk to people in crypto about this, a lot of the time people don't care because they think, look, this is a market problem. The free market is gonna find ways to solve this. And the bad news is that the people who have studied how the free market actually solves this have disagreed for 60 to 70 years. Uh, and the reason for that is that the free market will do this, but it has its price. And the price is that the private sector must eliminate openness to incentivize provision. So if you ask the private sector to do it and the private sector figures out a way to do it, the cost of that is monopolization, cartelization, privatization. We don't have open data flows because they're being closed in order to create profitable business models. And the reason this matters is that understanding 
the economic problems gives us a full orbital view of the solution space. What we are seeing are three kinds of solutions in the blockchain industry. The first is the emergence of networks that are going back to volunteer provision. And these networks can be open, anybody can join, but they can't scale beyond the point that volunteers will provide infrastructure. The second solution is we can invite the free market in to pay for stuff, but the private sector will create barriers to data sharing in order to create opportunities to profit and pay for that work. So we will end up with uh, these scalable networks that are permissioned networks that are dominated by monopolies in the network layer. That's what we're seeing with Infura. Is there a better solution? We believe the only good solution is you actually have to fix the incentive structure, but this is possible. And what this means is you have to have a form of work that's not mining and staking, because mining and staking are, are extractive forms of work. What we need is a form of work that actually encourages people to do the work that the network needs to preserve openness. And there is actually a form of work that exists. Uh, that form is the collection and sharing of fees, which is what Sato pays for. Um, we do this by replacing mining and staking with a form of work we call routing work, uh, which adds cryptographic signatures to the network layer, and it basically pays people for the work that they do efficiently collecting money for the network. So it's, uh, it's a non-extractive form of, of work. Otherwise, the network has the same uh, properties as proof of work and proof of stake. And I hope you found this presentation interesting. Uh, we are always interested in connecting with people in academia, uh, computer science, economics, distributed systems, uh, who are interested in fixing the underlying incentive problems in blockchain. Please feel welcome to reach out. Thank you.